Hi everyone, uh, welcome again to another uh, GA4 uh, tutorial. So today I'm going to show you really uh, a simple uh, way um, to track a button click um, on GA4. So how to set up uh, some tracking for, for a button click basically um, and also how to make that as a conversion should, should you so wish. Um, so let's uh, jump right in. I'm going to share my uh, screen so just give me a second to bring up the correct screen, which you should see. Um, and here we have again uh, my fake shop um, and we're visiting this lovely fake e-commerce store once again for this uh, tutorial. Um, and we are going to be in a position where we've got something on our site that we want to track and it's a button click, right? So you might have a call to action button on your website or it might be um, uh, an anchor, uh, a CTA button that's an, a, an anchor button, right? That takes you somewhere else on the site or it might be a contact, but either way, it's a call to action CTA button on your website that you want to track um, with using GA4. So you want to understand how many people are actually clicking on that button. So um, the button that I'm going to uh, show the example on today is going to be the button on the form, um, which is uh, on, on our site. So I'm going to use this button here um, to, to show you how to track uh, a button. And we're going to be using Google Tag Manager to do this. Um, so if you haven't already got Google Tag Manager on your website and implemented, then you need to do that. Um, we have a video to show you how to do that. Um, but uh, let's get straight in there. Um, I'm just going to open up Google Tag Manager. And the f very first thing that we need to do uh, using Google Tag Manager is um, go to our uh, variables uh, drop down on the left hand side. And we need to configure these variables. So we need to go to configure and we need to scroll down and we need to click and we basically need to check the checkboxes of all of these ones. And while we're here, I'm also going to put forms in there as well. Okay, so all of these variables have been added. I can close that down. And you can see that they've appeared here now, right? Um, so the, the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to create a trigger. So I'm going to create a new trigger and this is just going to be called clicks and all clicks. So I just want a trigger that basically created for any time a click is made on my site. So I'm going to click uh, configuration, open up this window and then just click all elements. And then I'm going to leave this on all clicks, save that. And then I'm going to go over to preview, which brings up the uh, Google Tag Assistant um, and de debug mode. I'm going to connect the domain. And then I'm going to go over to the contact form. And all I'm going to do is click around. So I said I've made two clicks there. And you will see that these two clicks should appear, right? So it's, 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 it's noticing that I'm making these clicks on the page. So if I then actually click on an element on the page, let's say if I actually click on this submit button, I know I haven't filled the form in, but let's just say I clicked on the button in this case. Um, let's go to the tag assistant. We know that our last click was on that button, right? So we can go down and just make sure it's still connected here. Is that registering? Here we go. So you can see this number here, number 24 here was the click on that. And the reason why I can tell is because I've gone into variables here and I can see all the variables that were on that, that the information that's on that click, right? So that's the best way to think about it. The variables that are associated with that, uh, the action of that click that I just made. And you can see things like click text was submit, right? So if we take a look at that button, the button is submit, right? It says submit on there. We can also see um, some other uh, interesting things like, you know, the actual click ID. So the click ID is WP Forms Submit 66. So we've got some other things here. And if we scroll down, we've also got some other information there as well. But this is how we're going to build our trigger for our button, which we can then attach to a tag 
which we then can send over to GA4. So first of all, back over to Google Tag Manager, we're now going to create a new trigger and this trigger is going to be called CTA button click. So call to action button, button click. And we are going to have all elements, but this time we're going to say some clicks. Now I'm going to come back over to my tag assistant window and look at this click again. And I'm going to pick out in this instance, click text. So I can see that the click text contains submit, right? So I'm going to copy that. And I'm going to take that over and here in this drop down, some clicks, I know that it was click text contains paste submit. Okay, save that. So now I've got my trigger, that trigger is going to, that, that, that's going to be a trigger that, that fires when somebody clicks on that button, right, on, on click text. Now, what we could also add to that is we could also add on this some further filters and, and, and basically some further ways to actually filter that for when that trigger will fire. So for example, if we only wanted this to, to um, fire on that particular contact page, okay, we could actually go, well, you know, this is the contact page. So we'd copy that and we could actually further define that the page URL contains contact, right? So both of these things have to be true for that to, to fire. So you can further, you know, uh, customize and filter through. So let's, let's take that for now, right? So we know that it has to be on the contact page and this click text has to contain submit. So we save that. Right, now we have to attach that to a tag. So go over to the tags and then what we can do is create a new tag and this is going to be GA4 and it's going to be a CTA button click, okay? And what we're going to be doing is clicking on tag configuration, going to Google Analytics and then going to GA4 event. Now in the GA4 event, we're going to need our measurement ID and we're also going to need an event name. So we can pop over to our Google Analytics 4 property and we can go and grab our measurement ID, which is found in data streams. Click on your web data stream, copy your measurement ID over. Uh, where are we? Wrong tabs. And paste that in. And event name, we can call this CTA button click. Now with GA4, um, the event names need to be lowercase and you need to use underscores, okay? So you need to, this is the naming conventions that you need to follow. And then when we come down to triggering, we can select the trigger that we've just created. So we've actually created that trigger, CTA button click. So that trigger is gonna tell that tag to fire, which will then send the information over to GA4. So let's save that. And then we'll close down these two uh, tabs, which we have our tag assistant open with, and we'll actually preview that again. So we'll open those back up. And then we'll do we'll we'll complete a new test. We'll go to contact. I'm going to click on this button and go to tag assistant. And you'll see now that on this contact, but this click, we'll go here. We can see that this tag actually fired. And why did it fire? Well, all of these things were true, right? We're on this page. The click text contains submit, and it was a click event. So that is now succeeded and that will be firing information over to GA4 and GA4 should start seeing that. But how do we check that GA4 is actually receiving that signal? Well, let's go back to GA4 and go to our property. And in the admin panel, we can go down to the debug view and we should be able to see all of that information that's been sent over from that debug window that we've just been at. So that should be picking up in, in Google Analytics 4 as well. So as you can see here, we can see that the CTA button click is there. Okay, it's, it's, yeah, it's here, it's appearing, which is great news. So once we have that, you've got two options. Now, if this is a valuable action for your website, for your business, 
then you might want to consider adding this as a conversion. Now, if it's not, you might just want to track the event and have that custom event, right? So what we're using here is creating custom events. Now, that event, you can have that event and you can track that event and you can monitor it, right? But it's not a conversion. So if you wanted to bring that into your conversion reports, then you would need to mark this as a conversion. And to do that, if you just copy this and on the left hand side, or you can go back to the admin panel, but on the left hand side, you can see conversions. Now, if you go new conversion event and then paste, paste the uh, event name exactly as it is, and then save. Now, what that is, is that's telling GA4 straight away that you want to mark that as a conversion. So from, from the from the off, it knows that this, you know, you're marking this as a conversion, okay? So if we go back over to events, sorry, if back over to debug view, then in the past, of course, this is still an event, but let's what, say if we actually complete that, uh, we've still got this window connected in the, um, in the tag assistant. So if I submit that again, okay, and just make sure that that's registered it, I believe it has. If we go back over to debug, and see if it registers on here. And here we go. It's registered the event and hopefully it should register that it should be looking at it as a conversion now as well. Now we've made that change, but it doesn't look like it has. So let's try a refresh on this side. Okay, let's try a refresh on that side. Let's try it again. We'll try it another couple of times. So if I go to the about page, go to contact, and then if I go down to submit again and click that button, it's definitely registering over here. Is it registering on the debug on Google Analytics? There we go. Okay, so it's recognized at that time. So you can now see that that is now marked as a conversion because it's come up with a green flag instead of the usual blue event symbols, right? So the CTA button click is, is there. So it's recognizing that as a conversion. Great. That's all done. The one thing that you need to make sure that you do, though, is that once you've checked it all, is that go back over to Google, uh, Google Tag Manager. Once you've made all those changes, you need to make sure that you submit that particular version, that, uh, that those changes that you've made. You need to make them live and publish them on your site. So we've added, so just add a, a version name. So I'll put like added um, CTA button click um, GA4 event. Right, and if you're in like a bigger team, then of course fill this out with lots of description. And, and you know, if there's going to be more more people on your team that are using this, then make sure you know you you really do use the description to obviously explain what you've done. Uh, but in this case, it's just me, so I can just publish, and just make sure that you've actually published that container for that for those changes to actually go live on your website and start tracking properly. Now the tracking we did was just in the debug view, right? So it was it, it wasn't actually properly live. So this time this is prop properly live, okay? And that's it, so that's how we uh, track a uh, CTA button click in GA4 using the custom events. Now, I hope that was helpful. Please, you know, have a look at some of our other videos and let me know uh, in the comments if there's anything that you uh, yeah, wanna add or anything you wanna ask. And yeah, hope that was helpful and uh, hopefully see you next time. Yeah, thanks very much for stopping by and um, I'll stop my screen share now. And yeah, thanks very much and hope to see you soon.